I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be a why you should read video. It's been four months uh, since I made this kind of video. The last one was for the Ryria Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. But today, because I have finally finished reading The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu, Today's video will be why you should read the Dandelion Dynasty. This video will be a mix of why you should read the Dandelion Dynasty and also a spoiler-free review of The Veiled Throne and Speaking Bones, which is the third and fourth book in the Dandelion Dynasty. I took great length to making sure that this video is spoiler-free and I hope that you will watch it. Or at the very least, make sure to check out this series because after reading through the Dandelion Dynasty, I am now labeling Ken Liu as a genius. Speaking Bones has launched the Dandelion Dynasty into becoming the best series of 2022 for me, and I do not think this will change for the rest of the year. Since The Wall of Storms, I have mentioned the difficulty of reviewing each book in the Dandelion Dynasty, and that situation hasn't changed here. That statement is even more prevalent here. I have written more than 600 reviews now, and each volume in the Dandelion Dynasty, especially Speaking Boons, are some of the hardest reviews I've ever written for three main reasons. The first one is, it is impossible and futile to try and tell the magnificence of the series through a few reviews. This series is seriously an experience and it is something that you should read and complete for yourself. No reviews in the world will be able to capture the multitude of impactful depths that Ken Liu has poured into the Dandelion Dynasty. The second reason being, each book in the Dandelion Dynasty packed a myriad of glorious content. Although the Dandelion Dynasty is technically a quartet, each book feels like I've read at least two or three epic fantasy book worth of content. The third reason, I've never highlighted quotes from a book or series as much as I did for the Dandelion Dynasty. With 181 quotes alone, the Speaking Bones is by far the most highlighted book I have ever read. This quantity is unprecedented. As I always say, I usually highlight about 10 until 40 quotes per book. But almost every paragraph in the Dandelion Dynasty demands to be highlighted, remembered, and re-remembered. All of this made reviewing Speaking Bones so challenging. The Dandelion Dynasty is truly a special series. And although I fully understand that this video and my review won't be able to do this book or series justice, I will still attempt it in the hope of convincing at least one or two people to give this series a read. Because through that, I will know that I've succeeded in making the world a bit brighter. The world may not be fair, but we must strive to make it so. The world is a dark place, but we must strive to make it brighter. The Veiled Throne functions as the first half of the final book of the Dandelion Dynasty, but there is always a second act, always. And the second act to finally conclude the series is manifested in Speaking Bones. In part one of the Veiled Throne, we encountered a new important character from the lands of Ukyu and Gonde, Gostan. This was done in a flashback format, but that is no longer the case here. The last chapters of the Veiled Throne were centered on our main characters in the islands of Dara. We are not getting the continuation to the side of the story until we reach part two of the Speaking Bones. But believe me, the wait will be worth it. In part one of Speaking Bones, Hail Pummeled Flowers, the story focused on our main characters in the lands of Ukyu and Gonde. And without mentioning any spoilers, part one of the novel immediately showcased the main tone of the narrative that will be displayed even more powerfully in the rest of the novel. Incredibly emotional, thought-provoking, contemplative, and so intense. This shouldn't come as a surprise. As I said, The Veiled Throne and Speaking Bones are two parts of one big novel. That means what we are reading in Speaking Bones is almost an entire consecutive climax sequence and conclusions, but with proper build-up and superb pacing. And this notion applies to all five parts of the novel, starting from part one where the final confrontation between the Agon and the Liu Chu storyline is executed. I have no shame in admitting that I couldn't predict where the story was going. I was just astounded by how well written the big aerial battle was, but more importantly, I already love the themes that Liu discuss in part one. A few examples, the meaning of eternity, what defines good or evil, why the cycle of violence is recycled endlessly, how no one is a villain in their stories, and what is often used as justification for the act of killing. All of them were delivered with a freezing impact. And this is just from part one. Everything that happened in part one was harrowing, depressing, bittersweet, and memorable. 
and this worked well in preparing readers for the upcoming chaos and drama in part 2 of Speaking Boon's Thundered Awakened Forest. One of the best things about the Dandelion Dynasty has always been how Ken Liu incorporates the super engaging battle scenes and the various of deep themes into the story. We epic fantasy readers tend to love reading scenes of bloodshed, violence, and massive war scenes, but I think an SFF author has to be careful about applying these into their books. These devastating scenes without any emotional weight and proper setup would end up being mere flashy scenes that holds no meaning to me. Fortunately, this negative situation situation and feelings of boredom never happened throughout my time of reading the Dandelion Dynasty. The concept of power, its attainment, and the corruption from wielding it is one of the main themes that Liu insert into the narrative of the Dandelion Dynasty. We arrive at the final stage of its searing effect in Speaking Boons. Teeth on the board, one who wields power must understand the consequences of wielding it, or it will end up wielding the supposed wielder instead. These themes and the perpetually superlative character development, background development, and motivation building for the myriad of characters throughout the series imbued insanely terrifying emotional weight and stakes in the battle scenes and crimson conflicts. In Dara, it is said that there is often little to divide the madness of tyrants from the grace of kings, and heroes and villains alike demand sacrifices of others. The difference, if there is one, lies in why the sacrifices are being sought to satisfy the ambition of the few or to secure the freedom of the many. The destructive sunflower bloom of conflagrations and countless bloodshed poured into big battles like the Battle of the Crescent Island felt palpable, vivid, immersive, and pivotal. Before you drown in my overwhelming praises for Speaking Bones or the Dandelion Dynasty, I feel inclined as a reviewer to mention no war scenes in the series top over the Battle of Zatin Gulf in the Wall of Storms. This isn't to say the Battle of Crescent Island, or the Battle of Pan I'll talk about later, was ever uninteresting or boring, but let's put it this way. If the Battle of Crescent Island and the Battle of Pan are 5 stars material, the Battle of Zatin Gulf is a 6 out of 5 stars material. I know, for one thing, that several readers won't like the structure Liu used to depict the Battle of Crescent Island. The Battle of Crescent Island is divided into three huge chapters, and every chapter ended with a cliffhanger immediately followed by a long chapter about the new specific invention crafted to be utilized in the battle. This can be slightly disruptive to the pacing. Those who don't like reading a chapter ending in a cliffhanger might have an issue with this as they won't be able to read the continuation of the cliffhanger chapters without reading a 30 up to 40 pages chapter about the creation of a new invention first. But I loved it so much. Though it's true, it did decrease the tension of the battle, the juxtaposition between battle scenes and technology crafting demonstrated Liu's spellbinding storytelling skill. Change is a constant, and everyone has to adapt. There are consequences for every change, most of which cannot be anticipated. The belief that all wrongs can be righted merely by the desire to do good is worrisome. Even the wisest laws and the most dedicated ministers will produce injustice, so long as humans are frail and selfish. Speaking of cliffhanger and technologies, the end of part 2 of Speaking Bones will require readers to be patient again. It can be a bit hard, especially after such a pulse-pounding, dramatic, and enthralling turn of events that ended part 2 satisfyingly. Part 2 plunged readers immersed in Dara into sceneries of carnage in the land and the sky. Through engineering that changed the shape of the future, exceeding even the silk motic bolt's capability, the new arsenal of weapons created resulted in climatic duels and fiery detonations. But part 3, in my opinion, was different and absolutely worth it. By the end of the series, Part 3 of Speaking Bones became one of the most crucial sections in the novel. But above it all, excluding the importance of the chapters here, I think Part 3 was exquisitely meditative and impressive. Unlike Part 1 and Part 2 of Speaking Bones, Part 3, Stone Twisted Roots, was relatively calmer, at least for the storyline in the islands of Dara. The way Liu implemented technologies and inventions into the Dandelion Dynasty is utterly clever. I have always mentioned this, I love epic fantasy series that dares to blend technology and science into their epic fantasy series while keeping it secure that their series is still an epic fantasy series. The blending of genres is one of the things that Ken Liu excel so much in his storytelling. This is proven in all of his books even beyond the Dandelion Dynasty. And that is once again re-established in Speaking Bones. 
Technologies and invention often dictate how civilization advances, and the intelligent practicality and importance of technologies and inventions were not exclusively designed for war and obliteration. Most of part three centered around the dominant characters from the second half of the Veil Throne. And here, Liu also revealed the writing zither. I love everything about it. Not only does part 3 enhance the second half of the Veil Throne and the overall quality of it, but the philosophies and themes of healing, redemption, kindness, mercy, peace, war, life, and death embedded into part 3 constantly hit me like a brick. I will not spoil you anything about this, and I will only talk about this briefly. The origin story of Totoriyuana or Ruvizo Mender and the story of the Three Swords are some of the best origin or mythical stories I have ever read. Simple as that. Plus, it again exhibited Liu's wonderful talent for writing short stories. It is so good. So good. Can Liu save the best of speaking bones in part 4, The Fruits of Knowledge? It is, after all, the riveting denouement to the series. This is where everything came to an end. And I mean really everything. One of my favorite things about reading the Dandelion Dynasty or a well-structured epic fantasy series is how we can look back and realize how much has been planned and prepared since the beginning of this series. This goes back to the events in The Grace of Kings. The deadly long game that has been cultivated since the Grace of Kings and the Wall of Storms by one of the most spectacular and despicable characters I've ever read reached its final stage in this section as well. And although I ended up discovering the truth of her long game sooner than expected, seeing the full revelation still brought me relative satisfaction. I wanted a different fate for everything she has done, but what occurred is more fitting for the series. The Battle of Pan was absolutely compelling. Once again, the Battle of Pan was not as epic as the Battle of Zatin Gulf, but when it comes to emotional value, it was on par. All the unfolding vicious betrayals, heart-wrenching tragedy, merciless menace, ruthless violence, and tempestuous disputes ended in part 4. And you know what? I couldn't be more satisfied by the breathtaking sequence of events than what is written here. From my perspective and experience, the concluding chapters of Speaking Bones and the series were just too fitting to complain about. Calamity, cataclysm, war, and despair weren't the only key driving factors of the climax sequence of the book. If that was the case, the ending of the Dandelion Dynasty wouldn't be this special to me. As I said, portraying meticulously crafted balance in light, darkness, and the shade of grey between the two is one of the many talents Ken Liu accomplished marvelously. Hope, love, trust, friendship, peace, honor, art, and legacies, to mention a few, shine bright as well. Their beautiful existence, together with their dark counterparts, transform the series and the ending of Speaking Bones into something irreplaceably special to me. And the finishing touch composed in part 5, Falling Leaves, the epilogue chapters of the novel, proceed to turn the Dandelion Dynasty into the best series of the year for me with even more gravitas than it already has. Beauty and art can persuade through the heart even when grand speeches from learned philosophers fail to sway the mind. Translation, languages, cultures, prejudice, ideals, engineering, legacies, mentorship, love, friendship, family, and so much more. There is too much. There is simply too much to capture in a review. I've written more or less 10,000 words in total of reviews for the series, and I still feel like I've captured only fragments of its brilliance. Speaking Bones is a masterpiece, a masterful culmination to the Dandelion Dynasty. Spanning generations of stories through hundreds of characters, I am in disbelief that I must say goodbye to the series now. For the past four months, I've been reading one book in the series per month, Yet, it feels like I have lived in Dara for half of my lifetime. The Dandelion Dynasty is one of the very few series where each new volume I read improves the already exceptional and beyond exceptional for the Wall of Storms previous books. It is now proven that the reimagining of the Chu Han contention in The Grace of Kings was successfully established as an ironclad basis for the rest of the series to shine with its meteoric impact and illuminating excellence. Once again, no existing review in this world could encompass the multitude of depths, knowledge, and emotions contained in each volume of the Dandelion Dynasty. I absorb tomes of knowledge, a torrent of philosophies, exciting adventures, and unforgettable reading experience permanently put into my mind and soul. Can Liu always say that a book isn't completed when an author has finished writing the book? 
A book or a series is completed only when a reader has finished reading. And now I've completed the Dandelion Dynasty. I didn't just read about Dara and the lands of Ukyu and Gonde. I have lived them. How could I not? Ken Liu isn't merely a storyteller with an intricately deep knowledge of this world. I see him as someone who has truly lived these stories. And he's imparting the stories inside the Dandelion Dynasty to readers through his lyrical and evocative prose inside these books. Through his telling, my reading, and my re-remembering, I too have lived in the islands of Dara and the lands of Ukyu and Gonde. I have witnessed the tales of Kunigaru, Mata Zindu, Jia Matiza, Gin Mazoti, Zomi Kidosu, the children of the Dandelion Throne, and all the inhabitants from the islands of Dara and the lands of Ukyu and Gonde. I have heard stories of their gods. I I have undoubtedly enjoyed my remarkable time and experience with this series. And it is your turn. It is your turn to complete your version of the Dandelion Dynasty. And yes, you should read the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. This is a series that has catapulted its way into becoming one of my favorite series of all time. And for that, Ken Liu, you have my total gratitude for writing this masterpiece of a series. Teeth on the board, I will strive to serve Mutage. So yeah, that's it for me today. That's why you should read the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. So if you have read this series, do let me know your thoughts on the series. And if you haven't, do you have any plan to read the Dandelion Dynasty? I highly, highly recommend it. It has become seriously one of my favorite series of all time. It is truly incredible, a magnificent that is very rare. So yeah, that's it for me today. Uh, tomorrow's video will be my two years anniversary. I have something special uh, to post on this channel. I hope all of you will love watching it. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons.